Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you why in order to get the maximum thrust from a nozzle you have to expand the gases perfectly out to the atmospheric pressure or back pressure. I'm going to be following the derivation from Zucro and Hoffman and you can find the reference down in the video description. So we're going to start with the equation for the thrust for a turbojet and that's shown here. The thrust is equal to the mass flow rate times the exit velocity minus the inlet velocity plus the exit pressure minus the atmospheric pressure times the exit area. Now for a rocket there's no inlet velocity so UA is equal to zero and so just canceling that out, we get that the thrust for a rocket is m dot ue plus peae minus paae. I've just multiplied the exit area through. Let's use the turbojet equation though to keep it general uh, and we'll still get to the same solution. So here I've just drawn a qualitative plot of the thrust f versus the exit area ae and you can see that's the red curve here. And so for the maximum thrust, so the, the highest value on this plot, you can see that occurs at the top here where the slope is equal to zero and that's expressed mathematically as the df over dae is equal to zero. So the derivative of this uh, curve is equal to zero is where we get the maximum thrust. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of the thrust equation f that we had on the previous whiteboard and the goal is to find the exit pressure pe which is in that equation uh, for this max thrust condition. So I've rewritten the thrust equation up here and I've just factored through the m dot to both and ae to both terms and we're going to take the differential using the chain rule. So we're going to start off over here we just have df on the right hand side we have this term expands out into this and this, this term to this and this, this term to this and this, and this term to this and this. And so some things to note here are that UA is equal to a constant. That means that the flight speed is assumed equal to a constant uh, or the air entering the engine for a rocket. We don't even have UA, so we can just assume it's a constant here. M dot is equal to a constant, so the mass flow rate is constant through the engine. The atmospheric pressure is also equal to a constant. And so the derivative of a constant is equal to zero, so we can say that DUA is equal to zero, DM dot is equal to zero, and DPA is equal to zero. And that means that we can cross out some of these terms up here. So crossing out, we have the DM dot term in here, that goes to zero. We have DUA here, so that goes to zero. We have DM dot here, that goes to zero. And then we have DPA over here, so that goes to zero as well. And so I've just rewritten this equation up here just without the zero terms, and so we have the M dot DUE plus PEDAE plus AEDPE minus PADAE. So now to simplify this equation down even further, we want to use the conservation of mass and momentum at the nozzle exit. This is the momentum equation in differential form, so DP P plus rho u du is equal to zero, and this is the conservation of mass expressed as a mass flow rate, so m dot is equal to rho u a, and so if we plug in the uh, variables at the nozzle exit, so subscript e, we get dpe plus rho e u e d u e is equal to zero, and m dot is equal to rho e u e a e. So this is the expression from the previous whiteboard for the change in the thrust, and so if we plug in for m dot, we can see the m dot here, we plug that in, uh, we actually plug this one in, the rho e u e a e, we get this term here. This stays the same, this stays the same, and this stays the same. Now you can see that these two terms both have the common term a e, so we can factor out the a e and combine this and this, and so we get dpe plus rho e u e d u e times a e, and in this expression you can see that this right here is this expression up here which is equal to zero. So we can set this whole thing equal to zero, that means this whole term cancels out, and we're left with df is equal to p e d a e minus p a d a e. Now I've rewritten the df equation from the previous whiteboard as p e d a e minus p a d a e. Note that these two terms have the common term d a e, so we factor that out to get p e minus p a d a e. And recall that for the max thrust we said that the df over d a e is equal to zero, so that's the derivative of the thrust curve with respect to the exit area is equal to zero. So we divide through by DAE on both sides and we are left with DFDAE is equal to PE minus PA and that's equal to zero. So for max thrust, we get the condition that the exit pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which means the nozzle perfectly expands out the gases to the atmospheric pressure. So what's the implication of this solution, this PE is equal to PA? Let's say you've designed a rocket for a chamber pressure or reservoir pressure or stagnation pressure of P naught. Then the nozzle area ratio, A, E over AT, which is the exit area of the nozzle over the throat area of the nozzle, has to be chosen such that you have the exit pressure over the stagnation pressure or reservoir.
reservoir pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure over the stagnation or reservoir pressure. If you've watched my converging diverging nozzles video, I call the atmospheric pressure the back pressure, PB, so I've just written that here, that PE over P0 is equal to PB over P0 when you've isentropically or ideally expanded the gases out to the back pressure. In my next video, I'll be showing you how to calculate this particular value of PE over P0 for a given nozzle geometry. Thanks for watching.